I don't get it, Daddy. Shoshana's mom dies, and we give her a kugel? Shouldn't they say something to her? Whatever you do, Hanan, let her speak first. That's very important. And the kugel? Food is the last thing she should have to worry about over the next seven days. Not to get technical, but wouldn't it have been easier to just have it delivered? No. It's important that we bring the kugel and sit with her. It's just so sad. I just want to be able to say something to make it better for her. We all lose, Hanan. It's part of life. Yeah, but we don't all lose in the same way, Dad. That's why she speaks first. It's about her. We're just there to be with her, to support and console her. The last time I felt this way was when I visited the Holocaust Museum. This woman on the video, she must have been in her 90s. She told a story about how when she was a little girl in the concentration camp, she felt so lucky. <laughs> because for some reason, her mother was never hungry and always gave her her bread. <laughs> I mean, what do you say to that? You don't say anything, Hannah. You listen. And just be present. But how do you ever repair that hole? If I were the woman in the video, I would feel so guilty. That's because you think you can control, Hanan. But that's the perspective of a child. You can control your actions, but you can't control whether you live or die, Hanan. But it's just so sad. It is sad. Extremely sad. But it's also so much more, Hanan. That mother in the concentration camp didn't ask her daughter. She simply loved her daughter so much and wanted to give her the gift of life. And now her daughter has memorialized her mother's kindness in the video that speaks so strongly to you. And now you shared her story with me. But you still haven't explained to me when we get there. If I don't say anything to Shoshana, how can I help her feel better? Let me tell you a story now. In the kibbutz, there was a woman named Zafrira who lost her son tragically, brutally, in the Lebanon war. Zafrira's life completely fell apart. Not even her husband, Udi, who had been her best friend since they met when she was 16, not even Udi could console Zafrira. And then slowly, even her relationship with Udi began to fall apart too. No one could understand Zafrira's pain. Then, one day, Udi suggested to Zafrira to go to a support group of mothers who lost their sons. It was there that Zafrira met another mother who lost her son in the same war in a similarly brutal and tragic way. Zafrira could see the same empty hole the same pain in that mother's eyes. A pain that did not need to happen. A pain that did not make sense. A pain that would never go away. And in that mother's eyes, Zafrira found consolation. That mother's name was Fatima. The most important thing, Hanan, is for Shoshana not to feel alone. We need her to feel that her loss is shared by all of us. And then? Then, the hope is that as she mourns and reflects and returns to the place, the hope is that from the place, she can gain a new perspective, grow a new horizon that incorporates the memory of her loved one. What place? It's a place where we can be ourselves without pretending. It's a place where we can connect with and be embraced by something larger than ourselves. Why do we experience loss, Daddy? It's a very good question, Renan. 
and I don't know if I have a good answer. But I can tell you that in the Bible, Job asked God why. And God's answer was, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth, when the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? What does that mean, Daddy? I'm not sure, Hannah. You'll have to ask God. <laughs>